It's five minutes with me. Good day to you and welcome to five minutes with Marco. We're going to talk about feedback loops in middle school ministry. And I realize I think a lot of this applies to broader youth ministry, but eh, I'm a middle school guy. So Last night, as I'm prepping this podcast episode, I met with my seventh grade guys small group for the first time this calendar year. They met last week, but I was out of town. My experienced and consistent co-leader wasn't available to be there last night, and I was honestly nervous even after 42 years of doing this, particularly once I noticed that two particular guys were there, two guys who don't always come, but who have each proven a heaping capacity to utilize multiple approaches to destroy any chance of our group achieving 10 minutes of focus out of our 40 or our 70 minutes together. But it was a great night. And I left so deeply encouraged about the rest of the semester to come. But there's a problem that lurks in that. If I feel great or feel lousy only as a result of achieving 10 minutes of focus, then I'm not fully embracing the uniqueness of ministry with middle schoolers. If you teach a second grade Sunday school class, you can tell by kids' participation and attention how you're doing. If you volunteer in the parking lot ministry of your church, the cars either get parked or they don't. If you preach sermons in big church, people always let you know how uh, how and what they think. Really, almost every other ministry area in the church provides natural feedback loops, even ministry with more mature high schoolers, not so with middle schoolers. When feedback is absent, we often look to unhelpful measuring sticks to gauge whether or not we're on the right track. The most often used measuring stick, of course, is numbers. We wrongly assume that more kids means we're doing things right whereas fewer kids means we're doing something wrong. Numbers do mean something, but they can be misleading. Our ministry rate might grow because we're entertaining kids more, or our numbers might drop because the church down the street is entertaining kids more, or parents are choosing, for a variety of reasons, some good, some less so, to prioritize other things for their kids than attendance. If our ministry sees an attendance increase or decrease, we certainly should pay attention and do some digging to find out why it might be occurring, but we shouldn't just assume it's good or bad. Another measuring stick we often uh, wrongly apply is whether or not kids seem to be getting it quickly and quickly getting it quickly and reorienting their lives to becoming Christ-like. We that's our goal, of course, but we want to see that, but the res instant results are often very misleading with middle schoolers, and an apparent lack of results can be equally misleading. Let's talk about a few better measuring sticks. Are we focusing on teens or progr programs? Which takes priority in our planning? Do the kids in our ministry have an adult who knows them by name and are connected with them at a personal level? Are we providing opportunity for real belonging where middle schoolers can know and be known? Are we cultivating genuine communion, which is community with Christ in the mix? Are we actively walking alongside middle schoolers in their physical, emotional, relational, and spiritual development? Are we normalizing their experience and helping them understand how much God loves them? Is our group inclusive or exclusive? Do we notice others, especially those at a disadvantage, those on the fringe? Fringe. Are there kids who aren't finding their niche? Uh, are new students welcomed and made to feel their, uh, that their presence is valued? Do our kids and leaders care about the things that God cares about? Does our group care about worship and justice and serving others, or do we only exist to make ourselves happy? Are we engaged in the mission of God in the world? Are we discerning where God is active and present, bringing restoration and redemption and joining up in that work? Are we helping middle schoolers understand scripture and explore how it can impact their lives? Are we helping them to see the scope of God's big story and how their lives connect to what God is doing? Are we honoring parents in our ministry? Are we communicating well? Are we supporting parents in the spiritual formation of their children? Are we doing anything counterproductive to this value of supporting and building bridges with parents? Are we as leaders modeling a Christ-like faith? Are we pursuing God? Are we transparent and real about our pursuit, success, and failure? I encourage you to determine with your team what you value and what your ministry's emphasis is. Ask for input from parents, other church leaders, and your middle schoolers themselves. Pray with your leadership team and discern how God might be leading you as you measure success. 
Youth Cartel Podcast Network.